What a week we've had in track and field. Shakira Richards and Tess positive for weed and was excluded from the Olympics and the Americans are up in arms. Elaine Thompson here runs a season's best time in Hungary beating Shelly and Fraser Price in the process. Stephanie and McPherson runs as not a sub-50 time and Sharika Jackson runs a blistering 200 to defeat longtime nemesis Shawnee Miller Weibo. But with all of that in mind, the Olympics are fast approaching, so let's spend this week looking at some of the Caribbean's best female medal prospects going into the Olympic Games. Hi, I'm Leighton Levy and this is Tokyo Take. We have a lot to get through, so let's get the show on the road. Shawnee has probably been the best female sprinter in the world for the past few years. The only time she has lost since 2017 were at the World Championship Finals in Doha in October 2019 and on Tuesday in Hungary. Worthy, she's coming back from injury and is not yet at her best, but she needs to get there in a hurry. She's entered in both the 200 and 400 for Tokyo, but as of right now, based solely on her numbers, her best bet is the 400 meters. That event is wide open, with McPherson and Conera Hayes of the United States looking like genuine medal contenders at this point. If the Bahamian Sprint Queen is to win a medal in Tokyo, this is likely where it will come from. Perhaps she can follow in the footsteps of Marie Jose Perec and win two Olympic 400 meter titles. As it relates to the 200, things are way more challenging. It has become increasingly clear that whoever medals in the 200 will have to break 22 seconds. So far, five women going into Tokyo have done that. Where does that leave Shawnee if she doesn't significantly improve over the next three weeks? On the outside, looking in. At this point, I think at least two Jamaican women will be on the podium in the 200 meters, and it could even be three. Elaine Thompson here, Fraser Price, and Jackson are hot favorites for the medals, with Dina Asher Smith and Gabby Thomas, third fastest woman of all time, heavily in the mix. This could be the race of the games. Of course, then there's everyone's hope to see the women's 100 meters. In April, Shakira Richardson runs 10.72 and looks like a sure medalist in the 100 meters. But how quickly have things changed? The outspoken American is now out. And while her absence will take a bit of spice out of the race, it will still be red hot. There are several possible scenarios here. One of them being Jamaica's taking the sweep of the medals. However, there are several other permutations, but for me, all of them have at least two Jamaicans being among the medals. But which two will it be? That's tough to answer. Fraser Price 10.63, Thompson Herod 10.71, and Jackson 10.77 will be the three fastest women going in. But Marie Jose Talou and Dina Asher Smith and a couple of others are right on the cusp and could break into the top three if they come into the games in the kind of shape we saw from them two years ago in Doha. Both women have looked really good and are likely to be in even better shape in the next three weeks. So it could be a Jamaica 1-2-3, a Jamaica 1-2, or a Jamaica 1-3. Looking over to the middle distances, I believe we could have an ex unexpected reason to celebrate this season. Um, Natoya Gould, who has been overshadowed by the Spring Queens, um, could be one of those surprise medalists. Gould has a personal best of 156.15 from 2018, has run 157.84 and 156.15. 44 this season, the latter coming earlier this week. Now stronger and faster this season than in previous years, the little lady from Manchester, if she can navigate the rounds, could be that bonus medal prospect. In the 100 meter hurdles, as far as I'm concerned, that medal will, gold medal will go to Puerto Rico's Jasmine Camacho Quinn. If she can replicate her best time this season of 12.32 and 12.34 that she ran in Hungary, everyone else is running for places. Kendra Harrison and Christina Clemens as well as Nigeria's Toby Amerson will also be in the hunt. But it will take a lifetime best for our national champion, Megan Tapper, Brittany Anderson and Yannick Thompson to get onto the podium. But I believe it's possible, probable even. Let's jump into the pit now with the triple jump where Jamaica has two of the top five women in the world this year in Shanika Ricketts and Kimberly Williams. Other than the imperious Yulimar Rojas, Ricketts has been the best triple jumper in the world for the past two years. And I think she will remain in that position for Tokyo if the ridiculous Final Three format doesn't get in the way. If Ricketts can get anywhere near her lifetime best of 1498 or better, she should be on the podium. For Williams, the path to the medal is a lot more challenging. 
with Povea from Cuba and Kentura Orji from the US, both over 1490 this season. Williams will have to significantly improve on her 1469 lifetime best to get there. The relays are a lot simpler. If the stick goes around, Jamaica wins gold in the 4x1 and 4x4 relays. I'm not sure what the Bahamas are doing with their mixed relays, but if they use Steve Gardner and Miller Weibo, gold could be theirs. What do you think? If there's anyone else who you think will medal in Tokyo from the Caribbean, let me know. By the way, congratulations to Rasheen Simpson and Tyler Austin, who were among the first to say that Hazley Crawford was the first Caribbean male to win a gold medal in the 100 meters of the Olympics. He accomplished this feat in the 1976 Games in Montreal, Canada. Now for this week's question. At the Sydney Games in 2000, a women's relay team from the Caribbean won the 4x100 meter relays. What country is that team from and what are they known as? Thanks for joining me for another episode of Tokyo Take. See you next week.